So for the past six years or so, we've been road tripping with a Nissan Leaf, first the 2011 Nissan Leaf in the UK, and then more recently the 2013 Nissan Leaf. In fact, that's our Nissan Leaf behind us. We've also had to borrow petrol cars for long distance trips, but today, now we've got our Chevrolet Bolt EV, we're doing a long distance 500 mile trip um, from the top end of Oregon to the bottom end of Oregon. And one of the questions that I'm keen to answer is, is the electric vehicle charging network for this car any better than the electric vehicle charging network for the Nissan Leaf? Because Chedemo, which is what the Nissan Leaf uses, has been around a fairly long time. And the network for that is becoming pretty robust. But CCS, the charging standard for the Bolt EV, well, that's a relative new kid on the block. Let's see if it can put up or support a 500 mile EV trip. So we made our first stop, um, it was like 120 miles, which proves my whole theory that the car needs to stop when I need to pee. And I don't know if you can see, but the air around here is thick. We've had forest fires um, in this part of Oregon. But the air up in Portland is lovely and clear, well, reasonably clear. But down here you can taste, you can taste the, the, the horrid, acrid air of, of forest fires. It's really horrible because of the heat wave, because of the really dry conditions. You know, a large part of the state is on fire and it's certainly, you can certainly tell. So thank you for nice air conditioning. And because we're not driving a petrol or diesel car, we don't have to worry about tailpipe emissions. And Oregon's electricity grid's really green, so hopefully the electricity we've used has come from a pretty green source. So, back on the road. So we finally made it to uh, the Fred Meyer in Roseburg, um, which was where we'd you know, decided that we were gonna charge before making our final leg. Um, we've actually, planned to spend about 45 minutes to an hour here and were we using a 50 kilowatt charging station we'd actually be pretty much full by the time we leave the car's telling me that we'll be 80 percent complete 80 percent full by 11 56 a.m now it is now 10 06 a.m which means we'd have to sit here for two hours to charge the car to 80 percent now obviously <laughs> we're not going to do that um but it does indicate that the speed of the charging infrastructure does play a really big role when you have a large capacity battery pack so it's 10 45 on the nose we've just come back to the car a couple of really interesting things have happened firstly the car was really slow to charge to begin with, um, but now it says that the full 80% will be, um, full 80% is an oxymoron, but you know what I mean, uh, that the 80% charge will be complete by 11.34, so far sooner than it predicted when we initially plugged in. The other thing that's interesting is we predicted we'd get about 100 miles of range. Um, we've actually got 110 miles of range, so that's good. Um, and we've done a bit of, <clears throat> done a bit of, of planning looks like the charging station down the road is going to be ready um, according to the car um, we have uh, nearly 50% of, of battery according to the charge station we've been here for 43 minutes um, and again that indicates really nicely how important it is to have higher powered CCS charging stations now this uh, CCS charging station only operates at 24 kilowatts. The car is capable of operating at up to 80 kilowatts, of receiving power at rates of up to 80 kilowatts. So the charging here has been pretty slow, but nevertheless, enough to get us on our merry way. See you in a bit. As, uh, as I predicted, we made it to Grants Pass in one piece. It's the third one that we've stopped today. Technically, we could have just stopped once to get here. Um, that first stop we made was really because I needed the bathroom and there was a rapid charger there. So, you know, we just whacked it on for 10, 15 minutes while we, you know, switched out, stretched our legs, etc., etc. Um, we made it here with 32 miles of range. We'd just gone into the orange. And interestingly, I realized something. I got range anxiety in this car 
when it still had 50 miles of range left because of the the total bar um where the bar was on the gauge now obviously if you're driving a leaf and you're down into that bit at the bottom of the bar and the bar's that big you panic you go okay i need to stop and recharge when the car got to that same point psychologically my brain wanted to go back to that panic i've only got a few miles left i need to stop and charge and actually when i was looking at the um the uh the app that comes with the chevy volt ed the my chevrolet app it said look you'll only have 14 percent of charge when you get to this charging station now in my head 14 percent meant that i would be down into single digits but you know I arrived with 30 plus miles of range. So there is some learning to be done there. Now, we'll be making the reverse trip, so we'll make some more observations on the way back, but so far, so good. We're on our way back. We're back at Roseburg. We've been here now for quite some time, like an hour, an hour and a half. And the reason is that this, this charging station can only charge at 24 kilowatts. It's actually only been charging the car at 18 kilowatts. And we've made the decision that we're about 20 miles short of what we need to get home. But the traffic's not getting any better. The weather's not getting any better. So we've got like 170 miles. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna head to Salem where there's actually a 50 kilowatt charger which is obviously twice as fast as this one we've just been using. So, yeah, we probably could have left sooner, but eh, we had time to talk, we had a drink, we ate some yogurt covered pretzels. Anyway, time to hit the road. So here I am at the final, so here I am at the final charging station of the evening and it's a 50 kilowatt charging station. It's capable of delivering 50 kilowatts to our Chevrolet Bolt EV. And it is delivering nearly that. It's something like 40, 44 kilowatts going into this car's battery pack. That's far better than the 16, 17, 18 kilowatts that we were getting out of the other DC quick charging stations throughout this trip. Now, if I'm honest, this trip has been a little tedious the the distance that i've had to travel hasn't been the problem it's the the time we've taken charging and it's the time taken charging because of these 24 kilowatt charging stations this 50 kilowatt charging station is delivering a really decent amount of power in a reasonable amount of time it's enabling us to continue on our way without suffering any range anxiety and in about three minutes time, we'll unplug it and we'll get on our merry way. So what does this mean? Well, yes, you can road trip in a Chevrolet Bolt EV. It's far more easy than it would be in a limited range EV, but the speed of charging really does make a difference. And here on the West Coast, at least certainly south of Portland, the lack of 50 kilowatt DC quick charging stations that have CCS plugs on them means that you're slowed down by the charging network, not the car. And that's a bit of a problem. Go north and it's the other story. There are plenty of 50 kilowatt charging stations north of Portland, which means that this car is a real easy breeze to drive north into Washington. But if I'm really, really honest, I think we need to see more 50, 60, 70, 80 kilowatt charging stations, which would work with the Bolt. And then maybe we'll have a better road trip experience. Admittedly, most people won't need to do more than 238 miles in a single sitting. And if they do, they probably have somewhere to charge at the other end for several hours before coming back. So my use case is for the 0.01% of trips. It would have just been a little bit more easy and a little bit more pleasant to have a charging infrastructure to back it up. Anyway, I'm off to Japan. I may even be on a plane by now. So make sure you like, comment and subscribe. Do click on the links in the section below if you want to support Transport Evolved or the clickable one at the end of the video. And I'll give you another video very soon. Until then, 
I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield and keep evolving.